everybody. Welcome back to the At Home Dive YouTube channel. As always, my name is Joey, and today we're in the kitchen making something absolutely fantastic. It's something that we all eat pretty often, and it's almost next to free to make. Today we're making simple bread. So sit back, hit that subscribe button, and let's dive right in. It's on the counter today. We have a pretty simple list of ingredients, and they're all pretty cheap and probably in your pantry at home anyway. We're going to start with one tablespoon of active dry yeast. We have one tablespoon of white sugar one teaspoon of kosher salt. We have six cups of AP flour. We may not use all this. Uh, we're gonna use at least five and a half cups of it though. We have warm water here. We're waiting on that to cool down just a little bit. And we have some extra flour back here for whenever we go to dust our counters. We're gonna use about a tablespoon of olive oil, a little extra salt to put on top. And we have just some fine cornmeal that we're gonna put on the bottom of the bread to keep it from sticking to the pan. So let's get started. Thing we're going to do to get our bread started is activate our yeast. For that we're going to take two cups of hot water, we're going to add in one tablespoon of sugar and one tablespoon of yeast. We're going to mix these well and we're going to let it sit for about 15 minutes to get the yeast activated and nice and bubbly. You'll know when it's ready. Right, so we're back and as you can see here the yeast has risen quite a bit and made several bubbles and a lot of them have even popped so what we're going to do is we're just going to give this one final mix real quick and then we're going to start adding in the salt and the flour i'm going to be adding the flour in about half a cup at a time and working it in just to kind of help make sure that we don't put too much flour in i'm going to go ahead and start with about three and a half cups so right now the dough is going to be pretty wet we can expect but that's okay because we're going to keep adding in the flour as we go. Once we've got quite a bit of flour in, we can go ahead and add in the salt. You don't want to add in the salt too early because salt actually kills yeast. And without yeast, your bread's not really going to do much. We're going to add flour to the dough until it's not very sticky anymore. And you can actually kind of work it into itself without it sticking to everything so much. So we're still going on the flour here. And all the small pieces of dough that are collecting in the bowl, separate from the main bowl of dough, you wanna make sure that those get well incorporated and all work together. Now that the dough is in a good spot where most of the flour has been absorbed, it's not sticky to the touch anymore, it's not dry. Take the excess flour here and dump it out onto the countertop. And then we're gonna go ahead and use a little bit of the excess that we had over here to just dust the countertop with very lightly. And then we're gonna start kneading the dough into itself. And the best way for us to do that is to push the dough away from you, fold it back, and then turn. Push, fold, turn. You can see that the dough's starting to get kind of smooth on top, and that's a good sign that your kneading is kind of working well and it's on its way. Uh, also, sometimes I'll just kind of roll the dough into itself, kind of like forming like a mushroom cap, if you will, and just kind of roll the dough down and then go back to kneading it. Once we've kneaded our dough for about five minutes, it's time to go ahead and clean the bowl because we're going to reuse this bowl, but we don't want the dry flour around the outside. Now that our bowl is relatively clean, we're going to go ahead and put about a tablespoon of olive oil in here. We just need enough to take the dough, throw it face down in here, roll it around, and then flip it over. We're going to do that so that the dough doesn't dry out while we let it rise and also to keep it from sticking to the bowl. So now that the bowl is nice and oiled all around, we're going to cover it and let it rise. For the rising process, you want to cover your dough with a damp kitchen towel and then set it somewhere warm. We're going to let it rise for about an hour and a half or until it's doubled in size. So we are back and as you can see our dough has a little over doubled in size so it's exactly what we're looking for. So now we're just going to punch it a few times to get the excess air out and then we're going to go ahead and dust the countertop quite liberally with some flour. We're going to pull it out and we're going to knead the dough a few times and then we should be ready to go. Now that the dough has been kneaded and got the excess air pushed out of it, I'm just going to cut it in half. And once we've done this, I like to just generically form it into a loaf shape. So I'm going to roll it a couple of times and pull the outside over around to the bottom. That way we get the nice elongated smooth loaf. All right, so there's our two loaves. So now we have our cornmeal and our sheet tray. We're just gonna put a fair amount of cornmeal down 
and this is gonna keep the bread from sticking. So we wanna slide it around and make sure we have enough to coat just a little bit. We don't need a whole lot. But then we're just gonna go ahead and pick the loaves up and put them onto the cornmeal. Now that we're here, we're gonna let these sit and rest for about 45 more minutes. So it's been about 20 minutes now, and I'm just gonna go ahead and preheat our oven to 500 degrees. And I have a pot of water on here. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna take this and I'm gonna set it on the bottom shelf in the oven. And that's gonna make it nice and steamy in here whenever we go to bake our bread. It's been about 45 minutes, and I have a small bowl of water here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a really sharp knife if you'd like to see a video of how to get your knives razor sharp, click the link in the top right corner now. If you have a razor blade handy that actually works probably best, but we're just gonna make like small cuts. I do four per loaf diagonally. And then I'm just gonna take a pastry brush and lightly brush with cold water all over the top. You don't need a lot, you just wanna moisten it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add just a light pinch of salt over the top here. You don't have to do this if you don't like. I think a little slightly saltiness will help it quite a bit. So, the oven's ready, and we're gonna get going. All right, so we have our loaves of bread, and as you see, the water in there is nice and hot now. We're gonna go ahead and place this right on the top rack. And we're gonna come back in about 10 minutes. All right, friends, welcome back. We've done the 10 minutes at 500 degrees. Now we're gonna drop the oven to 400 degrees. We're gonna rotate the pan real quick, and we're gonna do an additional 10 minutes. And as you can see here, the backside's darker, which is exactly why we're gonna rotate the pan. So the 10 minutes is up, and now we're going to go ahead and pull the bread out of the oven. And as you can see here, we have a nice, beautiful, golden brown, a nice firm texture on the outside, and no doubt a nice fluffy texture on the inside. Mine were just a little bit too close here, so they did join together, but that's no problem. I'm going to go ahead and separate them and put them on a rack to cool down, and we'll be right back in about 30 minutes. All right, friends, so here are our two absolutely gorgeous loaves of bread. I think they turned out quite well. We're gonna go ahead and cut them apart and see what the middle looks like. There we have it, friends. A fluffy, yet somewhat dense, nice, evenly textured layer of bread. Right, well, that wraps us up on how to make bread. Comment below and let me know how yours turns out. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to subscribe. Have a great day.